Simi Valley. This is the Outside Gate with Steve Hall on the L4 Media Network, where we talk US moto and anywhere the conversation goes. We are blessed today to have two-time national champion, motocross of nations champion and trophy of nations champion, Donnie Holshot Hansen. How are you? Uh, good, Steve. Steve, thank you for having me. No worries. Absolutely stoked to have you on the show. You, uh, you know, the word uh, the word legend gets thrown around a bit sometimes, but in your case, it's uh, it is absolutely justified. So yeah, very uh, very excited to talk to you, Donnie. What? Um, so we just had the the Supercross finale, and uh, you know, a fair fair bit of action there. What what's your thoughts on that? Well, I think uh, Jet being who he is from out of the country and being a rookie and, and so young, this, uh, I think it, it caught everyone off guard. And uh, I thought it was, it was really exciting to see this young man and, and uh, do what he did, you know, and uh, he, he, he set the standard. So I was, I was excited. I was excited for, uh, for Jet and and the lawrence family and uh and excited to see some good racing yeah it's um it's just amazing you know i think as a uh, as an aussie like I, I, I don't even think it's really sunk in the, the gravity of it i think it'll take a while you know like i uh I, I remember um the hype when um when chad sort of broke broke ground um and and won one uh one in the states as an Aussie and um, you know, Jet, um, he's had a, he's had an up and down sort of season as far as um, with the fans and with the the media and all that sort of stuff. He's had a bit of a rough go at times and, and he's probably said some things that, that he shouldn't have said at times and that sort of thing. But um, the, uh, the skill is just uh, incredible and, and undeniable. So yeah, it, um, I'm uh, I'm already excited uh, uh, about uh, motocross of nations, so you know that's because uh, that's when he's actually really riding for Australia. So you know, but, well, hopefully, hopefully they can. You know, uh, well, we saw him know. last year. We saw him last year for yeah. the designations, and uh, you know, on the 450 for the first time, it was unreal. Yeah. He yeah, finished so. right up there. He finished right up there, at, at, yeah. towards the top. So uh, he he is. He is someone that, that's going to be reckoned with. He's someone to be reckoned with. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, get his first year, uh, his rookie season under his belt, and then uh, see what he has for, for next year. But, you know, the motocross, the motocross is coming up, and we know what he can do on the yeah. 450 and uh, in the outdoors. And he proved to uh, have a perfect season this last year. So, <laughs> that's right. And it, it's a be it's a one ombre to be hard to beat. Yeah, everyone's in big trouble. I think. I think. Um, yeah. I think that um, you know. I think you know. Honestly, the only person who will beat him is himself if he's if he makes mistakes or you know gets hurt or something like that. I think that's the only way. You know. I think. I don't know about a perfect season. You know, like you'd like to think that um, you know for the for the excitement of the season that maybe Chase can take take the challenge to him um but yeah we'll uh, we'll see it's a shame that well, he was not there at the start so i think that uh this last year this the season this last season when he had a perfect season as a rookie um uh, you know he's still kind of green so i think he knows the importance of uh the championship you know probably won't be a perfect season and uh He'll 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 play his cards uh, the way he thinks he needs to do it to to come up with the championship, whether it's a, a you know a, a perfect season or not. But uh, regardless, he's uh, he's exciting to watch. You know, Donnie, it just struck me as I'm listening to you that um, you know last year the the, the big um, uh, groundbreaking Honda. Honda finally won after their big, big break. And you're the man who uh, who won the first championships for uh, the first Supercross championship for Honda. So <laughs> I was I was uh, the first one to win uh, outdoor and the Supercross 
on the same season for Honda. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the, yeah. the T50, 250 outdoor and, and the uh, 250 supercross season. So, yeah, yeah. first time for Honda. Yeah, it's pretty that cool. Was a while ago. Yeah. And the, I think the only person who who uh, took the Supercross Championship off Honda from all the way from you to um, to Jeremy was Wardy's couple of championships. Other than that, it was it was Honda guys from from eighty two to ninety six. Yeah, amazing, amazing. Donny, we might jump into uh, your uh, your early uh, early days. So my favorite question on the show is always. Um, when did the bug bite? When did you first uh, ride a mini bike, see a mini bike, or you know, and just decide that, geez, I, I love these things. This is, you know, this is a passion of mine now. Well, I'll tell you, Steve, is uh, my dad used to race. You know, he used to race TT and flat track back okay. in the early days. You know, back in the uh, whatever it was, the sixties and seventies. Uh, so. You know, it was it was in the blood, and uh, he got me going. Got me a taco mini bike back in the early early uh, ages, and and then uh, and then from there, uh, I rode a uh, got me a Hodaka ninety, and rode that for a bit, and then uh, from there, a one seventy five Yamaha. So I started racing TT and flat track following my dad's steps. You know, that's yeah. what he got me into. Uh, so I did that at the early age. And then for for a few, you know, for a couple of years or whatever it was. Uh, and uh, I was getting pretty good. I was getting pretty good. I was right, you know, Eddie Lawson was the expert, riding the expert classes. And I was back as an amateur, but you know, this 37 racing TT flat track in, in uh, Southern California, having a good time, a family thing. And, and, uh, between that and going out the desert do the, do the, uh, camping out and, and riding out in the desert playing, playing a little bit, but it wasn't until, it wasn't until, uh, uh, when was it the mid seventies or, or mid to later seventies, I had an individual that wanted to sponsor someone in motocross. And uh, so they, it, it, long story short, they got a hold of me and asked me if I want to try some motocross. Because if I did, I had potentially somebody to back me. So I said, yeah, I'll try it. So I borrowed the bike, raced my, uh, my first motocross race in Southern California, in my hometown, actually, Simi Valley. And uh, I won the 250 novice class. I was like, I was like 15 years old, I think. And then, uh, um, so I said, yeah, I like this thing. And you know, my dad didn't have no money, and and so I said, yeah, I kind of like this. Let's, let's do this motocross. So I had this individual. His name was Ron Smith from Southern California. Uh, he lived in the Chatsworth. Chats with California. Um, he took me in his wing and uh, ate the, the Makos were the bikes back back during that time, that back in the 70s, the AW, the Adolf Oil uh, Makos. So uh, anyways, he, he he liked the Makos. So every every few months, he would get me a new Mako. We'd go <laughs> racing, He'd take me me and my dad racing. We, I mean, we'll go to the races between Indian Dunes is where I started Valley Soccer Park or months back then out there in Sim Valley. Uh, Saddleback, uh, a little bit out there in Saddleback and just go racing, you know, a couple couple days a week, couple, three days a week, you know. And, and uh, growing up as a kid and having a good time racing and, and you know, between my dad and, and Ron Smith, uh you know back at me and and uh that's kind of where it's kind of where it started he uh he brought me along until yamaha gave me a support ride and so yamaha was supplying me with bikes well actually ron you know he knew that the japanese that's 
that's where the money is. You get, got to learn to ride a Japanese bike. So what he would do is he would go buy, when I'm still racing the Makos, he'd go buy a, a Yamaha, a 250 Yamaha, and, and we'd go to his, his ranch. He goes, ride this thing. See what you think. I ride it. I go, nah. Nah, I want my Mako. I want my Mako back. So he gives <laughs> he get that he get that Yamaha he bought, he gave it to his nephew, who 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 was an expert, a local expert out, out there at Saddleback. Give him the Yamaha or, or whatever. And and uh I get back in my Mako. Well, finally, after a couple of years, I go, Yeah, this Yamaha works pretty good. So I got on the Yamaha, started racing that thing. And then I got back by Yamaha as a support pro in the support program. Well, there's so many Yamaha support riders, you're just a, a number. And I remember that we'd have, you know, with the bikes that we had or bike that I had, you know, the, the thing is getting frames cracking and I wasn't getting a whole lot of support, you know. Um, so eventually Can-Am came up to me and said, hey, we want to back you. And... Uh, so we thought, well, Can Am's a smaller manufacturer. If we get more support, you know, I think we'll get more support. So we went that way. And uh, as it turned out, as it turned out, uh, it headed me to the right directions. And and uh, eventually Honda called me up, and we went Honda. No, it's no, it's that's. Uh... Yeah, I love it. Love the story, man. That's yeah, it's like I say, that's my favorite part of the show is hearing about the uh, the early days and that that progression. Yeah, the uh, well, you remember you remember uh, uh, the Greg Robertson? Who? Sorry, Greg Robertson. Do you remember that name? No, he was a, he was in Southern California, and he was a local rider. He was a he was a, a top contender in the ex in the pro class, the local pro class or expert, whatever you want to call it. And he was Can Am, and so I got on the Can Am. So we battle a lot, you know, um, and with, the, with 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 numerous uh, local pros out there in Southern California. But eventually, Bob Barker was the team manager for Can Am. He wanted Greg and I to come out to Florida to do some testing and race the one round. So we did, you know, I, he was older than me. I didn't have a driver's license or, and so we, we drove out with his family and, and myself and we went to, uh, we went to Florida and did spent three months racing the winter am and testing. Um, and that's back when the, uh, uh, the tracks were rough, real deep sand before the mm. sand got washed away over years, over the years. But, and, um, uh, so I spent three months testing and racing the wind ram. I didn't do real good in the racing, but uh, I got stronger, stronger physically and mentally. We're on the way home from Florida, going back to Southern California. Southern California. I just knew I was going to win. I was going to. I was going to win. If I, if I if I didn't win, I'd be right up there. So, and that's how it turned out. I I was winning or finishing right up there towards the front. Uh, every weekend well and then and then uh uh la coliseum came and we got we got uh signed up for i got my ama card and and got my uh, pro license to race my first supercross race mm. and as it turned out i finished uh seventh place first part privateer in the premier class behind uh, marty tribes and uh, so between winning locally and uh, and finishing seventh at the LA Coliseum in 79, uh, Can Am called me up. And uh, Jeff Smith, he was the main guy at the Can Am, they wanted to hire me for a factory buy. So uh, over, the, over the phone. So until, you know, we, we get a contract in front of me, I agreed. I agreed. Well, a week later, Honda calls me up. I said they wanted to hire me for twice the twice the money and for factory Honda, factory Honda Honda bikes. You know, racing the Marty Smith, uh, Tommy Croft, 
you know, mm. the, the factory bikes. And I said, God, that sounds so good. <clears throat> oh, that's what I want to do. But I want to do the right thing and talk to some people before I decide. So eventually it's it going to be Honda. So I signed with Honda, signed a one-year deal with Honda, and then uh, got my feet wet a little bit, got injured, injured in, in the uh, outdoors. But the Supercross, in the premier class, I finished uh, eighth place in the Supercross. And then, uh, anyways, they re-signed me for two more years where uh, I went out there and finished uh, sixth in the Supercross and third in the outdoors uh, behind Howard Tim and, and Hannah. Um, so going into my second year of my contract, which was my really my third year, Meantime, Omera and I hooked up, and uh, he moved out of his house, and and uh, he moved in with me, rented a room for me, and we we decided we we're going to train together, because he he I signed in 1980 with Honda, and then Omera signed in '81. So now we're gonna we're gonna live together, we're gonna train together, we're gonna push each other. He was 125, I was 250, and it worked out great. Worked out great work. Uh, I I won everything that year. Mm. That that third year, so I won the Supercross. I won the Outdoor Nationals. Johnny, Johnny finished, I believe, second in the 125s behind Ward, and he finished somewhere up there in the Supercross in, in the Premier Class, the 250 class. So um, let me back up a little bit. 1981, my second year on Honda. Uh, the uh, Americans that was picked to race the, the nations didn't work interested in going. Roger Roger DeCoster, who was our co team consultant for Honda, he goes, I'll, I'll bring my team. So between me and John, Johnny O'Mara, Daniel Port, and Chuck Sun, the four of us, it was a, it was a four-man team back then, yeah, uh, went to Europe. Went to Europe as a B team because the original team didn't want to want to go. Mm -hmm. But you know, uh, anyways, we went there and uh, and actually shocked the world. You know, mm -hmm. they weren't expecting nothing from us, and we went to uh, Belgium Lomo the first weekend. The deep sand, the roughest track probably in the world. Yeah, and and we beat the Europeans. We beat the Europeans. Uh, the next weekend, we go to Bill's team, Germany, and race 500s. And uh, again, we won. We won the overall. So between the two races, we, we shot the world and won. So it was. So after that, I went into the 82 season with a lot of confidence and a lot more knowledge. And after you know, spending the time uh, out there on the track with the against the, the best riders in the world, and uh, working with the between Johnny and I, <clears throat> pushing each other in the gym out there on the track, we uh, we uh, we tore it up that year where I won both class, both uh, Supercross and Outdoor Nationals, and he he finished second in the one twenty five and. Highly up there in the in the uh, Supercross as well. Mm -hmm. um, at the end of '82, well, after I clinched everything, went back to Europe to race the, the Dis Nations again for the second year, and I had time, so I went there to race the last 250 World Championship in Vimmerby, Sweden. Okay, so George Jobe. Danny Laporte was over there riding for Yamaha to race the championship uh, for the for the first year for Yamaha there, and uh, and I won both motos. I I, I won that last uh, GP there, and when uh, Danny clinched the title over Joe Bay, so the Americans starting to take over from the Europeans, you know, about this time. A couple of days later, over there. Uh, 
in Germany, Rolf Diffenbach's practice track behind his house is where I got off and uh, I was done. I was done racing and uh, retired. I had to retire from that. But that week, that they flew in David Bailey, who was a low man on total pole, come, coming up. They they got him in, and uh, we ended up winning the the destinations that year too. In fact, some thirteen years straight before we finally lost. So, mm. so I had a I had a like a, a better sweet uh, uh, career, uh, but you know, I, it it was good. It was good. It was exciting, and uh, three years on the circuit, three years on the circuit, and I. I was able to uh, accomplish what everyone sets out for, you know, in this three years. Yeah, that's so right. Exciting. Yeah, the um, <clears throat> yeah, I can see what you, you know, bittersweet sums it up nicely. I guess you know, yeah, you you sort of achieved everything at a short, uh, uh, but a short career, you know. Um, uh, do you do you look back a little bit, uh, you know, with your injury that you you probably actually sort of you know, lucky to have come out of it as good as you did. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, you know, it, it, they put me in a coma, and then I, you know, spent a couple of weeks over there in the hospital before they flew me back into Southern California and put me in the hospital there for another couple of weeks. But I had to go through and learn how to walk, had to learn how to talk, I had to learn over again. You know everything I had, and uh, but you know it came about pretty quick, and uh, and I I got back on a bike. I wanted to get back out there, but things weren't the same. Between losing my my balance, my depth reception, um, you know I I couldn't I couldn't put it together out there on the track. So. Yeah. Uh, after trying, spending some time trying, I said, you know, I'm done. I'm done. So shortly afterwards, I go, you know what? I learned a lot in the short period of time. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to go out there and teach these riders, these, these young riders. And, and eventually it became where I'm working with some of the best riders, you know, in the world. So, you know, spending some 40 years, 40 years teaching, mm. you know, it, it was good. It was good. Absolutely. That um that nineteen eighty two, uh, all that you know, sort of eighty one eighty two period was such a um a huge transition in the uh, the power shift from the Europeans to the Americans, which was you know really stamped at that nineteen eighty one trophy to nations and motocross to nations. And then also the the emergence of of Honda as as such a you know, a, a dominant you know powerhouse for sort of pretty much the next two decades you know um, it's such a transition and also even those um, those works bikes particularly your 1982 works bike is uh, is held up as as just one of the uh, well in my eyes one of the coolest maybe the coolest works bike ever um, absolutely yeah. Yeah, yeah, and um, you know, and the way that team came together with uh, with Roger and with um, the, like the genius of Dave Arnold and that sort of thing, it was just a it's like a perfect storm that really, um, you know, really changed the the landscape of motocross, didn't it? Yes, you know, D Dave and Roger were, uh, you know a big influence in, in the in the race team you know and we spent a lot of time the bikes were so great when they came over from europe and then we started testing spending time on the tracks and things and they, they were unreal they were they're ahead of their time ahead of the uh, their time you know but um you know we, we had between between myself daryl schultz uh Johnny O, you know, one of the 250 outdoors, won the Supercross. Daryl Schultz won the 500 uh, outdoors. Johnny won in the 125 eventually, uh, 
you know, uh, outdoors. It, it just, uh, it was, it was, it was pretty cool. It was unreal. It was unreal. And, uh, you know, we worked our butts off. We worked our butts off and did, you know, did what we had to do to perform at the best that we, we could, you know, and, uh, it was, it was, it was, it was unreal. Hmm. It was cool. Very cool. Very, very, very cool. Yeah. Um, you still, uh, catch up. I know, I think, was it last year or, or early this year, you, uh, guys from 981 team all caught up together. I remember saying something where you, you and, um, and Chuck and Danny and, and Johnny had a bit of a uh, a bit of a reunion. Does that sort of thing happen pretty often? The, where was that at? Yeah, I remember there was. A, I I saw you guys all together. Um, in you know probably it was last year or something. Yeah, you you guys um, were all together, to, or or you might have been all on the same show talking together. A function or something, maybe. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean it's 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 good you know we're done racing we've been done racing forever but you know sit around the table dave arnold and and uh we've had uh, you know a few functions like that wherever it is you know and uh you know and talk about some old times over over a glass of wine or something and uh and uh, talk about do you remember this or do you remember that and yeah it's it's, it's pretty cool yeah, I'll, I'll bet it's it's very cool, very cool. Yeah, and so yeah, um, you started training. So yeah, t- want to talk a little bit about your your early days when you first started um, started training people. Yeah, I've been training since 1984. So a couple of years after I was done uh, done competing, um, it started start doing that teaching what i learned over the years and uh improving the riders from beginners on up to the pros um more you know spending some 40 years teaching you know i just uh you know all all around the world all around the world and riders coming to me spending time at our camps you know and and uh it, it's, it's it's a great experience but more recently you know uh working with roxon and helping him with the starts he was really inconsistent with starts and i spent i spent uh, time i spent uh a, a, you know a, a couple days with him at the suzuki test track you know a few years ago and uh, getting the starts down and then and then uh, you can see it he was he after after a couple of races he started getting get it consistent on, on the racing. Um, also, Eli Tomac going out to the Yamaha track and spending a couple of days with him with starts. And when he was on the, the Kawasaki's, he was terrible. He was terrible. So I started going out there and, and uh, filming him and and taking the film back to him on the starting line. Goes, this is what this is what you're this is what I'm seeing. You know, uh, whether it's you know leaving the gate. You know, too late, and how to adjust adjust yourself to to get that timing down better. And after spending some time, and after a couple races, he started consistently getting the starts down. So, you know, things like that feel really good. It makes me feel excited to help out some of the best in in the world on on, on their performance. Mm. Yeah, your your list of um, of riders who you've helped out over the years is it almost mirrors the list of champions over the years, doesn't it? So you know, yeah. like I think Villo and Dunge as well. At some stage, you you helped out those guys. I'm sorry, Villapoto and Dungey, you helped those guys. Well, out that, that was yeah, that was mini bike days, building the foundation, helping them fill you know build a foundation, and uh, you know as they as they climb towards the top so yeah many years of and many riders from from all over i've had riders from slovenia a small part of yugoslavia Mm. you know come over and spent uh when i was living in texas come over spent three months with me you go home 
and he started to win the championship, you know. He starts, you know, it's it's just a great feeling, you know, how about to say that I helped that I helped that rider uh, achieve what he was what, what everyone's after. Yeah, I guess um I can tell you I can tell you love it by the passion in the way you're talking about it and you know, you love you love your job like that. It doesn't feel like work, does it? No. No, I never had a real job. I don't know how to work. <laughs> I went from I went from high school to racing to motocross schools. Yeah. I didn't have to work. <laughs> when back at high school in California as, as a as a motocross racer, that must have made you a bit of a rock star at school, did it? Uh, I, no, not for me. I mean, I was kind of I didn't. I was kind of quiet about it, you know. Did my thing. I had to keep my grades up to continue riding and racing my my bike, you know. From my my you know, from my dad. I, if you want to do this, you got to keep your grades up. So I did what I had to do. And as far as uh, you know, the kids at school, they didn't really know too much about okay. my, my deal. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> very good very good and um so who's your current students donnie uh, i'm kind of i'm kind of retiring for the most part okay and i still get i still i still work with some of the locals the locals but uh as far as uh uh the, the pros i've kind of stepped back and kind of retired for the most part uh I, I love watching the competition. I love competition. I, I really enjoy the uh, uh, the racing that goes on. But uh, yeah, that, that's about it. That's about it. Yeah, fair enough. Hey, Donnie, I might uh, I might sneak in an ad read about this time. Um, so I've got the t shirt on. Guts Racing. So Guts Racing is a, uh, uh, I'm, I am very proud that they are a, a supporter and a sponsor of the Outside Gate. And um, it's uh, it's pretty cool to say that, um, yeah, that RJ Hampshire, he just clinched the championship on a gut seat. So how about that? That's a, it uh, doesn't get much, uh, doesn't get much better than that. And um, like I've been saying, the uh, that those Rockstar Husqvarna's, if you buy one new off the showroom floor, the Rockstar Edition, if you want to look like RJ, they come off the showroom floor with a gut seat, which is a, uh, a pretty, you know, that speaks volumes on the product when Husqvarna's premium model is coming off the showroom with a uh, with a gut seat on it. And a couple of things I, um, I just showed there the other day, um, on the last show since i got my stuff when you buy one it's a bit hard to see there with the you get one of these cards that's got qr codes and you can scan them with your phone and it show, brings you to a video it shows you how to how to install that seat yourself okay. which is pretty cool and also with the yamahas the yamahas come with this so they come with a tank cover as well the tank cap cover as well as your uh, seat, so um, I don't know whether you get that from all uh, all seat brands, but you certainly do with um, with Guts Racing. Um, GutsRacing.com is the um, is the website. That's a real easy one to remember. GutsRacing.com. And as uh, as as my guy, privateer hero Scott Meshi, as he said on the show, and I told him I was going to going to keep his catchphrase. He said they're a butt gripper and they'll make you a ripper. So there you go. Get into uh, get into guts racing. I uh, I lived in Northern California where guts racing is. I know yeah. the family. I know the family. We used to go racing every weekend before guts racing uh, came up. But uh, uh, great family, great family, and our kids will go racing. Uh, and then uh, yeah. So that that's great. I know they're the, they're the best guts racing. Uh, and then um, uh, my my son Josh, you know, he's he's in with the the racing uh, testing for the yes. racing department uh, at Husqvarna. So 
Uh, it was good to see that uh, Hampshire got the championship, and, and as a team, you know they're they're number one. They're number one. So yeah, I was right. excited. So excited to see that. Yeah, I yeah, um, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Josh is um is is test riding for uh, House Commander, isn't he? Yeah, of yeah. The race team, yeah. Of course. Yes, Do you remember yeah. that time? Do you remember that when when Josh went and raced the Australia's Supercross series and and uh, Chad was racing? I don't think he was racing the whole series, but he came in and raced some of the some of the series. And uh, the the one lapper, they had that one lapper in between motos, was it was Chad and Josh. Oh yeah, yeah. Josh Josh got the start, and and uh, Chad passed him at some point in the middle of the race the middle of the lap and the last turn josh and and uh passed him back before the the check of flag yeah i remember that i haven't seen that that video used to pop up pretty regularly i haven't seen it for a while i'm gonna have to go and look it up and watch it again yeah, i haven't seen it a while too but i was i was pretty excited it was a cool thing that that the 1v1 you know yeah it was a, a funny thing I remember. I think about probably the last time they did that. It was um, that was Ricky Ricky Carmichael and Ronnie Mack did one. That was uh, that was pretty. Which they, they were playing around. Of, of course, it wasn't it wasn't so serious. But yeah, that was yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah they the Aussie Supercross. They've come up with some fun fun things like that over the years. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah, cool. And um, Josh Josh is a dad nowadays too, isn't he? He's what? Josh is a dad now, isn't he? He's got kids, yeah. so yeah. Uh, he's got a nine-year-old uh, daughter, Kennedy, my grand, my granddaughter, beautiful mm. little Kennedy. Yeah, yeah. How many kids? I, do you I, have? I, just, I just saw. I just saw her on TV. Salt Lake uh, Supercross. She was uh, when Hampshire won. It went to they. They were uh, sh shooting. His uh, wife and and his baby in the stands, and Kennedy was standing with them. <laughs> so that's it it pretty cool. Yeah, that's cool. How many kids do you have? Huh? How many kids? kids, do you kids? Have? Yeah. I, I have uh, Josh and my uh, daughter Caitlin. Okay, yeah, the two kids. Yeah, Caitlin, yeah. Caitlin has uh, four kids and uh, lives out in. Southern California. They they both live in Southern California. I, I'm out here in in Colorado. Got out of Southern California. I was yeah, born yeah. raised here, but I had to get out of there. Yeah, a lot of people. A lot of people seem to want to get out of California. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's time. It's time. Colorado's yeah. beautiful, and uh, you got four seasons. Even though uh, the wife and I went on ski, we uh, we still enjoy the. The, the climate yeah yeah it's nice out here yeah yeah man i um i still think of like still think about how that uh that champion josh josh's championships that was so close you know <laughs> like wow two of them two of them he almost yeah. won so close you know yeah. Yeah. yeah but he didn't do it so yeah 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 i guess uh I think, you know, I, I mean, I'm sure he's got some regret about that, but, uh, you know, he's done pretty well for himself anyway, though, hasn't he? Yeah, he has. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, very, that, well, that one with Grant Langston, though, like, that was just, oh, it doesn't, can't, you can't get closer than that, can you? You can't get closer than a count back uh, they on, on they wins. Tied, they tied at the end for points, but Grant had more wins than Josh, so he got the championship. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, and then the other one was uh, Yama Troy, where he was. I mean, he, he was. Uh, I don't know what race it was, but he was the fastest. His mm. teammate was Brock Tickle. He was the fastest. Uh, oh, uh, Eli Tomac was. He was a. Uh, he was the Honda uh, factory connection uh, Honda rider. Um, anyways, in my mind, he had the series one, you know, he was leading after a, whatever it is, a few races and, uh, he got off in practice at Anaheim in the whoops and knocked himself out and, uh, broke his hand. So 
I went back in the pits and went to the medics and and they weren't AMA wasn't gonna let him race because he knocked himself out. And hand was was one thing, but that was no big deal. But because he knocked himself out and he, he started tearing up, he goes, I can't let the championship go. You know, they said, Okay, we're gonna give you some tests. So we ran through the test, he passed the test. We had a couple hours before the race. And uh, I go, Josh, what was you get? What was you got to do with after after this race? You got we have uh, a week off, and then and then there's whatever race it was, and then you got two months off. There's a big break. Yeah, we'll go in and get your hand fit. You know, do what they could have surgery. You got time to heal up and get back out there. I said, let's just try to get a top ten finish, salvage some points. He goes, top ten. He goes, shit, I'm going to win. So I'm thinking to myself, he's still he's jacked up in the head a little bit from being knocked out. Uh, he, he comes out and uh, he holds shots and and uh, he, he, he won his heat race. I go, shit, he can get on, on the box now. On the main event, him and Eli went back and forth a little bit, but he won. And... Uh, uh, and then there's a week off, and then I believe it's Seattle, and it was a rainy, it was messy, and, and uh, he got off in practice and did more damage to his hand during practice, and so it eventually went down. You know, started going 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 backwards. So uh, he ended up third in the series. Tickle won. Eli finished second, and then Josh. But you know, I just knew. In my heart, that he had that series one, but mm. it didn't happen. It yeah. Didn't happen. Yeah. Oh well. Yeah. What was Josh like as a student for you? Like, you know, uh, the old thing where you know people don't listen to their dad. Like, the, you know, like was he? Oh, he, he was the biggest pain in the ass. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That father son relationship. You don't listen to your dad. You listen to someone else, but not your dad. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, you know, and, and that's how he was. But he was listening. And when he would talk to somebody about about something that they need help with, he would tell them the same thing I, would t I was telling him. So he was listening, but he, he just made it a pain in the ass along the way, though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a funny thing, that. It's a funny thing, yeah. Like, uh, that's it. You know, dad, dad doesn't know anything, but then eventually you realize dad knew everything. <laughs> so I've got teenage kids now, so, I, you yeah. know, yeah. That, yeah. yeah. You know, there's sometimes, yeah, dad doesn't know anything. And I was like, yeah, yeah just wait another 15 years and you realize dad knew everything. You know, <laughs> so, they, they appreciate you later on. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Donnie, we might move into just um, I've got just some sort of, uh, you know, uh, random, random fun questions, a, a bit, few more things just about, uh, about yourself. Um, what sort of music are you into? Uh, country. I like everything. I like everything, but I like the current country. Um, yeah. Yeah. Do you uh, do you play any instruments or anything like that? Uh, no. I, I'm one of those one of those guys that that sings sings in the shower, but uh, no instrument. Yeah. 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 Do you have any um, – uh, another question that rolls into another question that I like to ask is what skills do you wish you had that you don't have? Because because mine is I wish I could play the guitar. Um, do you have any skills that you wish you were – you know, wish you had? Yeah, I wish I was a, a singer. I wish I was a better singer because I'm not very good. <laughs> okay, that's all right. Oh, look, oh, oh, oh yeah, I, I love singing. I'm always singing. It, so, yeah. it, uh, no, I'm fine. It, it, I, I'm fine. I don't, uh, you know – I enjoy I enjoy the races, you know. I enjoy the races. Uh, I enjoy I enjoy music. We just got back from Nashville, Tennessee, and yeah. that was a kick, you know. That was a kick. Listen to some some good music and do a lot of people watching and drinking some beer. So we had a good time there. But uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm pretty easy these days. Mm. I don't, how, I don't need a lot. I don't need a lot. How many supercrosses a year do you go to? Do you have like, you know, you uh, usually, usually uh, most of the West Coast. 
most of the West Coast. Uh, I really enjoy. I do. I, I do like watching my TV, sitting on my uh, sitting on my couch, and uh, see a lot of racing uh, from the couch. But uh, yeah, mostly mostly the West mostly the West Coast. Every once in a while, I go to East Coast race, maybe Daytona or something. But um, yeah, that's about it. Yeah, cool. Do you are you a brand Im- ambassador for any any brands in moto or you know just no. like Honda doesn't hook you up with with uh, some special treatment or anything when you go somewhere? No, uh, no. they should. I, I'm, real, I'm real low key. I, I'm real low key. Yeah, you just like to. Uh, so you you're more like to sit in the stands than 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 the corporate box. Yeah. 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 Cool. That's cool. I like it. Yeah, I know. Well, um, yeah, I went to my first. Um, my, so my first trip, to, you know, after a lifetime of being a fan of, my first trip to America was this year for Anaheim One. So that was amazing. I, I planned to. Uh, I planned to try and get back. Uh, try and get back there regularly. So, but yeah, that was. Um, that was uh, amazing. Yeah, and I, I saw a few people. I saw a few. You know, I didn't want to bug anyone, but I saw a few familiar faces walking around doing that low key thing. You know. And yeah. uh, which I thought was pretty cool. Yeah. Anaheim, Anaheim, when I won it in 1982, that race, that sat uh, over 70,000 people. It was, it was packed. 70,250 people when I won. Nowadays, you know, they have waterfalls. They take out some of the seats, a lot of the seats, and have waterfalls and, so, and, and such in there. So now the pack, when it's full, it's like 40,000. Mm. So it, was, yeah. it was bigger back then it was bigger back then yeah all that section with the rocks and and all that yeah it uh it takes away a lot of seats doesn't it yeah 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 it's yeah, surprising it's, yeah it's surprising it's, like uh, it looks cool but yeah 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 very good what um what do you do what what do you do to yeah you know, maybe it is just watching supercross and television what do you do to relax what's your absolute chill out to them listen to music go to um um uh, we have this place called it's like a big auditorium it's not an auditorium it has uh the boot barn they bring in uh bring some music and go there and and have a, a nice dinner listen to some music and you know have a have, you know have a couple of beers whatever um and like I said, I'm real easy, easy these days, and laid back, and and uh, I like my music. I like watching the moto, and uh, people watch. Yeah, <laughs> very, very, very good, man. Hey, yeah, uh, a couple of other fun questions. Um, let me think. What's a good one? Uh, oh, what when you when you're watching the racing. What is it about? So let's uh, like use an example of like the Supercross futures. What makes you a fan of a rider when you're watching a race like that? That sort of you know young fellas, and you you notice a rider and you think, wow, that guy's got it. What what stands out to you there? Uh that's how the uh, line choice, uh, their technique, uh, how they attack. Uh, they don't hold back. Probably those things. Yeah. Who did? Who stood out to you in the futures this year? Oh, this, this, this. I'm sorry. There's, 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 there's all those kids. You know, yeah. there's all those kids. I, I enjoy watching these guys and and uh, watching how they come through the ranks. Uh, no one stands out. You know, in in mine, no one stands out particularly, but. Uh, all those kids, all those kids have a, you know, have a bright future if they can stay off the ground and keep pushing the and keep learning along the way. Mm. That that future race is, is great for those kids. It is. So, I love it. Yeah, I hope they ex- I hope they expand it and do do more. You know, like obviously that you can't you got to be careful not to put too much financial pressure on the families. No. Uh, um, but but to expand it a little bit more, I think you know maybe if they did half the rounds or something like that, just to 
to because uh, I think it's yeah, it's really really um really good for him. And I, and as a fan, I love watching it. I love you know like I like the, I like that amateur scene. I like seeing the the kids coming through and that sort of thing. It's um it's uh it's really uh really cool thing to see you know and um you know yeah, imagine all, if- those, all those kids all those kids you can tell you can see a writer good technique and and you can tell that their attitude is they want to get up towards the front and and uh they learn along the way what it takes to get up there but you know they learn from their heroes that they that they're that they're watching you know when they're not racing and watching the watching the pros they're gonna duplicate as as best they can but um you know learning learning from past pros that's that's been there is, is a great tool it's a great tool to uh you know for a lot of riders they you know they got to learn on their own and but if you can learn from from someone that's been through it and it's going to make it easier in a short amount of time to get to where you're where you're after to get mm. absolutely a uh, couple other fun questions what do we got um oh here's a good one so who was your who was your um your like teenage crush whose poster did you have on your wall you know like so for like for me um my teenage crush was um, Kelly Bundy from uh, Married with Children. What about yourself? I like Bundy too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. I never, I never <laughs> thought about that. Uh, shoot, I, I don't know. Yeah, I'm just trying to think what um, I asked. Uh, I asked. I asked Jim that in the last show. Then I think he said Farrah Fawcett from Charlie's Angels was his. Yeah, Farrah Fawcett. <laughs> <laughs> that's 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 a given but uh yeah uh shoot i don't uh i don't know i don't know uh the other thing my my uh, another a uh, problem that i have is i could picture somebody like bundy like you're talking about yeah yeah but i i couldn't tell you who what her name was yeah, yeah, I've got to always think, think well, like a, uh, Christina Applegate, but I've I've got to think about that because I just I just straight away I just said Kelly Bundy, you know? so yeah. But I remember I remember the name Bundy with uh, that show, and uh, she was she was pretty cool. Yeah, absolutely. A um, couple of things I do to uh, close out the show. Um, the first one is um, give us your best Aussie accent. No, uh, you're not even gonna try. <laughs> I, I can't do. I can't do. I can't do that. Give us, give us a good day, mate. Hey, mate. Oh, you're not too bad. You're not too bad. Like, hey, hey mate. Yeah, I, I, I can't do an Aussie. That wasn't too bad, though, Donny. You, you, you're Josh selling yourself. Do an Aussie, I think. I think he can do it. He can do a. He can do a. Because he spent yeah. a bit of time over here. Yeah. I, I can't do it. Yeah. No, yours wasn't too bad, though. You're selling yourself short. <laughs> awesome. Well, and yeah. and um, the last thing I do um, for to close out the show is uh, you, you like country music. I actually sing a little bit of Kenny Rogers to close out the show. There's a funny backstory to it. I'm not a singer. I just like singing. And it's just a fun thing that sort of started. And then it just sort of stuck as the closing of the show. So. I'll uh, I'll ease into a bit of Kenny Rogers, the the gambler, and always say to people, if you know the words, you're welcome to join in. Um, but there's no uh, there's no pressure; it's just for fun. Yeah, I don't I don't sing. I'm not I'm not as I, actually I I just I don't sing in the shower either. I just I just do that in there. But uh, I do love I do love music. I do love the current country uh, music and. Uh, yeah awesome I, just, I enjoy it i enjoy it all right well i hope this isn't too bad <laughs> so yeah. i handed him my bottle and he drank down my last swallow then he bummed a cigarette and asked me for a light and the night got deathly quiet 
and his face lost all expression. Said, if you're going to play the game, boy, you got to learn to play it right. You got to know when to hold him, know when to fold him, know when to walk away, know when to run. You never count your money. When you're sitting at the table, they'll bet time enough for counting when the deal is done. Tony Hansen, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much for your time today. Thank you so much, Steve. I, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure talking with you and uh, getting on your show. Thank you for having me. Thank you, mate. Cheers. You enjoy uh, the rest of your evening. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thanks, man.